Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 67. In this episode, Amazon on Fire, House for Hack, and Comic Book Controversy. Thanks for listening. Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 67. Uh, in the studio today, we have uh, Johan Els. Good evening, Tim. Jan Vermeulen. Good evening. Um, Skulk Kienis. How's it, Tim? From House for Hack. I'm going to be talking a bit more about your, what your place is and everything it does just now. Um, and mixing the mixer, who shall not be named, who we apparently multi- can multitask better than any human should. Exactly. And hopefully sig- hand signals to be documented soon. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. we, we don't need to, that, one that one will not be documented. <laughs> Some say the mixer multitasks so well it outperforms these new fangled 10 plus core things that Intel are trying to sell people. <laughs> <laughs> that was an attempt. <laughs> well, we need Quinton back. He actually came up with some good ones. Mm, absolutely. Um, you, you should pre-write some, actually, that Does we can use in future shows. <laughs> does it include power saving? No, no. I'm pretty no, sure the 10 it, plus core monsters does uh, include power saving. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so you're gonna have to watch about Go like four, the four the shows random. worth. Would you like to? Uh, sure. Random, yeah. So according to the Dictionary of Dangerous Words at the Social Affairs Unit, be warned if you go to this link, um, it is a rather uh, charged. I'm gonna call it politically charged. Is it uh, safe work though? Yes, absolutely. It's safe for work. It's just a politically charged. It's just thing. used to when people it's say, be careful about going to this link. It's <laughs> yeah, got it's got an agenda. Is all. Okay. Um, and for some they'll agree with the agenda, and some they won't. And so, as a discussion point for tonight, the word unsustainable, who the guys from the Dictionary of Dangerous Words define as thus. This word no longer means that the practice to which it refers cannot continue. Instead, it means that the speaker does not like the practice and hopes it will soon come to an end. Unsustainable development is development the speaker does not approve of. Capitalism is unsustainable means that the speaker is anti-capitalist. It has taken the place of capitalism will collapse under the weight of its own contradictions. The welfare state is unsustainable or the euro is unsustainable means that the speaker does not approve of the welfare state or the euro. When something is described as unsustainable, it is now an opinion of worth and not a prophecy. We'll get to this a bit later. <laughs> um, we'll get to this a bit uh, later. Yeah, partially okay. agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. yeah, go for it. All right. Um, if you're listening, and you can also join us on IRC and chat to that us. That link of course, doesn't go to anything important. At irc.ltnet channel hash ltnet. Sorry. Uh, don't worry. It's got all. There's the, ch- the chat channel on the website. Um, if you listen to us in on YouTube or anything in the future, you can always join us on Wednesday nights at live.altnet.tv. Anyway, let's get into some of our topics. <coughs> Breaking exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. So this this was there was a little in joke. Uh, yeah. Okay, so yes. the uh, Amazon Kindle Fire has been launched. So uh, and a couple of other Amazon Kindles. Touch. Um, yeah, the Kindle Touch and the Kindle itself has gotten a revamp. I've just spent one hundred and eighty nine dollars on a Kindle 3G, and now they've dropped the price on the Kindle keyboards. They've introduced a $79 Kindle. Have they dropped the price on the... On the yes, the Kindle keyboards are not cheaper. I think that the most expensive one is now $139. So they've dropped the price by $50. I'll have okay. to double check that just yes, to make sure. I also bought one from my mother for a birthday I've, I've just bought two whoa, whoa, in whoa, the whoa, States. Whoa. On Amazon.com. Yes, it's right there. Then the click all through. new Kindle at only $79. Yes, that's Kindle Wi-Fi, I believe. That's not the one you want, though. <laughs> no, Why? don't... Because you get what you pay for. Only Wi-Fi, no 3G. The whole point of the Kindle is that it is the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. In yep. order for it to be the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you must have 3G. I will okay. disagree, but okay. <laughs> Look, you may disagree. Well, well, more important, I see they dropped the keyboard. That's on the Kindle Touch. You can still buy the keyboard version if you want, which I I at this stage prefer, and I speak no, from the normal Kindle. Or, or also the, the the Kindle keyboard, the Kindle. Keyboard still exists. It's just not listed there because the it's not a new product. The 79 Rand one doesn't have touch. Okay, so the next version of a Kindle has got touch interface. Yes, if you don't That's buy the cheapest awesome. version. Yeah, the cheapest version is $79. Then the version just up from that, you basically pay $20 for touch. So, yeah. That's nothing, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's really, really it's cool. Yeah, I would, yeah, I'll go. And then $50 f- for with a SIM card in unlimited data worldwide. Yep. That's... Nah. No, it can't be. 
It is. It, Read it. There are there are provisos, but I mean you can pretty much surf to wherever you want, um, and because you know WhisperNet delivery is um, is the the poor publisher's burden to bear. Yes. Uh, and so okay, I cool. I can take my Kindle keyboard and browse to my broadband. I can actually browse to our website, but obviously you can't play the video. Let's yeah. talk. Let's talk. Network One interesting TV. thing I have picked up on the old Kindle, the keyboard Kindle, is that you can't, let's say if you've got an Audible account, you can't download the Audible po uh, books via the Whisper Whisper Net. Net. Ah, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. You have to okay. do that via Wi-Fi. All right. Yeah, Fair I enough. activated my wife's Audible account and she showed me last night that, why haven't I got an audio book on my Kindle? I'm like, I don't know. So as soon as you activate your audio, Audible account, it actually mm. gets added to your Kindle automatically. Yes, um, and if you've got an old Audible account, you can link it, uh, post link it, which I've done already. You just go in there and they say, would you like to link this to your uh, Amazon account? Uh, and you just say yes, and they said, okay, from now on you log in with your Amazon username and password. You refer to the keyboard Kindle, but I mean, isn't this the four models they're now going to be? No, the, if you click, if you go and look, they still do offer, you'll have to click all the way through though. It, they still offer the keyboard Kindle. The reason it's not on the Amazon front page at the moment is because it's not a brand spanking new product. Yeah. That's the old Kindle. But then that what's the keyboard Kindle going to be cost? Um, that's what I'm trying to Let, let me just click through, sorry, but I'm sorry, fairly I'm sure it's dropped $50 in price. I speak on a correction. It's 100 and something. Because if that Kindle is 79, then the, the, the keyboard Kindle should be slightly Yeah, cheaper. but remember, this uh, is the keyboard Kindle with 3G, so it's got the WhisperNet in. Oh, there's a keyboard. Okay, so oh, they call it Kindle Keyboard. Yes. Okay, uh, so right. that one's 99. So your cheap Kindle is 79. 79 as a tool for kids at school. It is such, such a... I mean, now, instead of buying yes. kids textbooks, instead of buying them readers... Well, you still have to buy them the textbooks, though. Yeah, sure, but hopefully it's a, it's a pile cheaper than... Because yeah. right now, when I go to, you know, choose your, your varsity bookstore, Utah or Van Skyks or whatever, um, you can, you're paying upwards of 500 bucks a textbook yeah. if you're not paying over 1,000 bucks a textbook. No, I agree. Look, it works out a lot cheaper, and it is the way of the future. Like, my, my one complaint is there's this AI course that you could do online uh, offered by Stanford. Yes. And there's the book that you need for that. Now, I want to buy the Kindle edition because I don't want to have a book that I'm going to be lugging around. Ralph, yes. You can only buy it if you're in America. Oh, no. Now, I'm going to try a VPN, but I haven't had time to sit down and re work out why my VPN is not connecting. Uh, so I want to see if you can get around that. And if it can, I will report back that you can do that. It's also significantly cheaper. Yeah. It's, it's a bit silly. Like, all these uh, geographic restrictions um, grate my cheese. So we really need to get some sort of global copyright. And if you uh, buy it enough, you can get around on. most of it. Yeah. The thing is, um, uh, sorry, th th that's a discussion for another time, but we really need to talk about the Kindle Fire because yes. that's sorry. what this is yes. really about. So we've got all these brand spanking new Kindles no, and they I'm rock. I, I, I'm happy to see that they actually didn't just release the Kindle Fire. Mm. It's the yes. fact that they've actually reversed, uh, reversioned their other products and some of these are brilliant. <coughs> and I, I like the fact that it's touch. Do you know how often with Kindles? Multi touch. I don't like. I don't like touch. I'm not going to have touch on my. I like touch. On, I, I love touch, but not on my Kindle. I how get often your grubby fingers off my Kindle. You just want to <laughs> touch it. No man. No, you, you want you want to scroll us somewhere for most things, but then you know suddenly you're on a web page. Have you ever tried to use a web page with the Kindle keyboard? Yes. Okay. Fair enough. It's it's an utter. Pain. But it's, it's just not designed to work. It's not its primary purpose. Its primary purpose is to display a book in uh, l like it's like I'm reading it off a page. That's its primary um, purpose. And then I don't want fingerprints all over the screen while I'm trying to but read. But what you will have at that point is to be able to touch. So if you're just using this book, um, they've changed the way. You don't have the buttons, which actually I do miss. Those buttons were lovely on the keyboard Kindles. Mm. Um, you now touch either the, r the right third or the left third of the screen to, yeah. to go in that direction. Which means that somebody's going to get their grubby fingerprints all over my Kindle screen and then I've got to wipe it clean. But not where you're going to be... Uh, not, you shouldn't be reading in that area. Oh, okay. So is the screen big enough that you'll have dead space on the left and right? Yeah. Okay. Um, also, just touch it on the edge. Yes. But I'm not going to be... Yeah, it's when my Kindle gets picked up by somebody else and goes, ooh, looky, touch. I'm no browsing a website on my Kindle. Kindle and like touching cool. it in the middle of the screen. You don't touch me on my Kindle. <laughs> don't touch me on my <laughs> Kindle. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, anyway, the Kindle Fire, fire. Yes. Is, yes. Is, oh, what sorry, is what was probably the most interesting. I mean, we've been talking about e-readers because they're awesome and people need to read more. But um, what's really, really interesting about the Kindle Fire is its price point at $199. Wi-Fi um, only. 
Wi-Fi only, excluding any sales tax, you know, blah, 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 it's provisos. Um, Wi-Fi but, only does not have the built-in 3G. No. Um, now, but I mean, $199, let's, let's be honest. That's yeah, not, well, what are you getting for that? That's, that's not so bad. Let's spec, come on. What yeah. are you getting for that? Dual-core processor. Yep. Uh, Capacitive touchscreen display. Seven-inch display. It's an IPS display. I IPS stands for in-plane switching, for those who don't know. Eight gigabytes internal know. memory. Eight gigabytes internal memory. Seven inch, it's a seven-inch display, so it's a smaller tablet. So Free cloud. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Come back to that one. Eight gig. Has it got expansion for memory? No. <coughs> Let's it, be honest. It comes with the cloud storage. Yes. So it's got eight, eight gig. gig. Eight gig is pretty good. I think entry level is now 32. Come on. Dude, then that the HTC sensation. How's your and HTC uh, does the HD one, doing? One, one gig. Exactly. So 16, 16 gig is pretty much entry level. Eight gig is not bad for something that costs two hundred dollars. Okay. <coughs> and only available in America right now. Yes. I fired off an email to Amazon. Let's see if I get a response and ask them. Oh, you what will be one of many. You know, <laughs> what what they would hopefully they've just got a, even though they just send me a canned response that'll be rad mm. just to tell me what their international expansion plans are. Look, there are supposed to be also be a new one being released in January February time. Like a new Kindle. Yeah. Okay. The the big problem behind this right now is that the the only app store on there apparently is the Amazon App Store. Obviously, if I were Amazon, I'd punt my own app store as well. Plus, they're probably not Google partners, so um, they they can't use the Google Android market and and that sort of or, or Maps. Got released when? Today. What time? Uh, ten. Around ten this morning. Uh, no, no, no. Well, it was this afternoon? Probably yeah. around three, four. So it's been five hours. That would be out. <laughs> no, they'll have. The, the, look, if you th just think of Sanogen, no, just take the Sanogen. Look, if they allow uh, third party, you know, uh, APKs in there, bootloader. If the bootloader can be changed, yeah, so. but we'll see. It's it's apparently a quite a, uh, a heavily customized version of Android. Mm. Anyway, the, my point to the whole Amazon App Store thing is that it's not available outside the US at all. Yeah. Until they make the Amazon App Store available outside the US, that this reminds thing is useless. me of a graph I have with my ball mate. You guys released an article saying that it was available. And then we have put an update right below that. As soon as, soon as I woke up in the morning, I checked it again, and then I updated the article. Cool. I, I checked it before you <laughs> <laughs> updated it. I was like, oh, so it was late at night. It was like, ooh, okay. It's it, still it, it was test. active for precisely, which is reason for the article enough, yes. I think, because it was active for precisely two or three hours. And now we've got that on record. Now we know that Amazon have tested this. And it's going to be coming live uh, soon. Well, we hope. And so I hope... And all of us are hoping that it's a sign of things to come. Uh, but it's no guarantee. It might have just been a mistake. Mm. Look, another way of looking at this, it's a color Kindle. True. Now, With an IPS display instead of e-ink. Yes. I prefer e-ink to read on. But it's, it's color. So you can get all your, your books on it. Uh, you can get your magazines, magazines on it, your graphic novels on it. Uh, the, with this, you can watch movies. They've got the whole, their version of Netflix, whatever, built into it. Um, it comes with cloud storage as well. So if you think of, of it as that, as a, more of a media device, not so much as a tablet, Android tablet, but more like a media device, then it's, and at that price point, awesome. Mm. Incredibly good. Hold on. There's two prices for each device. Special offer price and without special offer. The one with special offer is the ad-supported one. Okay, yep. so it is ad supported. Is it? Okay, where where, where did you find this? I've heard people say this. It, it's, you, you have to click. You have to click through. Is it? Uh, is that like of the fire order? Okay, the fire is not like it. Sorry. The fire is not like that. Okay. Okay, but all the Kindles, yeah, the prices that they show you. So the new keyboard Kindle at ninety nine dollars is the ad supported one. Yeah, there, there were rumors about that. And that, that won't ship out of out of US. That they would um, that they would support the Kindles, make them cheaper, but make them ad supported. That's a very clever move. So oh yes, I see it. Yes, the, 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 this is only for the black and the non-color, the e-ink. Yeah, yeah, the e-ink Kindles. Yeah. So the normal price is one thirty-nine. So it's actually, what was the price before? One one eighty-nine, fifty dollars. So you shave off fifty dollars to have ads blown at you. No, one thirty-nine. Yes, yes it's forty dollars. It used to be one eighty-nine. That's fifty dollars, uh, okay, guys. Okay. Okay. So yes. they dropped. I okay. would pay forty dollars not to get ads. Yeah, fifty. Uh, okay, looking at the Kindle Touch 3G. Okay, okay. It's $40. $40, difference. yeah. Absolutely. All right, anyway, I'm going to... Yeah, let's move it along, please. Cool. Well done, Amazon. <coughs> I hope you cool. make a success and shake the market a bit. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's like, oh, this is the thing that's going to that's gonna finally show the iPad what's what. No. Yes. It's not designed for that, though. 
Yeah, exactly. It's designed to be a media consumption uh, device is, and an e-reader. I think Amazon has been the first clever iPad contender in the market because they're the first one who have launched something that is not trying to beat the iPad on yes. its own turf. Yeah. So, anyway. Um, one thing I would wait for the 3G. And as the guys at Twith said, always wait for version 2. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? That's uh, why I'm going to be just looking at what Windows 8 is doing and uh, probably playing with it to review it. But I probably wouldn't buy it. Anyway, that's, yeah. that's a discussion for another yes. day. <laughs> Um, okay, also Netflix signs an exclusive deal with DreamWorks. I didn't put that in there. Uh, I am assuming you haven't put it in there. You like Netflix, don't you? Oh, I, I did. I have not looked at the snow notes, so let's, let's look at that. <laughs> Bas basically, DreamWorks. Uh, Dr brilliant. DreamWorks, so all your Toy Stories. Yes. Um, Isn't that Pixar? That is Pixar. Sorry, yes. DreamWorks is Steven Spielberg's studio. Yeah, which, what do they make? <laughs> I can't remember what they make. <laughs> I know they make a lot of good... Um, uh, Yes. Come, keep going. E.T. Keep going. <laughs> 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 so anyway, I can remember there was... Uh, I would imagine also the Super 8 that came out recently was DreamWorks. The, it's actually so difficult for me to, to remember which movies were Pixar and which ones were DreamWorks. For example, I'm going to go uh, Despicable Me. But yes. was that Pixar or DreamWorks? Pixar. DreamWorks. Was that DreamWorks? Yep. Okay. I'll anyway, I'll well, confirm. for the people who actually know which one's which, uh, that's actually <laughs> quite, a, quite a good deal for Netflix. Which That's gonna be good, there yeah. is a way you can get in this country. Uh, if you wish to find out how, you can email us offline. Since uh, Johan yeah, he's quite sensitive about it. You Just guys are going to get it bad. The, 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 the email anymore. address to send to is showmehowtovpnplocks at ltnet.tv. <laughs> or info at ltnet.tv. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. DreamWorks. Uh, talk, um, talking about our competition, I think it should be <laughs> over now. How to Train Your Dragon... Oh, there we go. Panda, uh, Kung Fu Panda, Shrek. It wasn't Despicable Me, it was Mega Mind. And Mega Mind. Yes. There you go. I'm still watching the new Kung, Kung Fu Panda. No, don't. Apparently. I've been no, told it's not. quite it was good. good. Okay. It was all right. Fair oh, wait. Oh, okay, good. Our email address competition isn't over yet, so I should mention this. Uh, we're giving away <coughs> some MSP launch pads. Uh, and the first person which I can find. Gets a capacitive touch booster pack as well. Um, you just need to send us an email address, uh, an email. And the competition is actually not what you're writing in the email, but what the email address is. Um, I'm, we'll all just now, we're going to move on, but I'll come into the one that we got recently that's quite good, which was a palindrome. Uh, I did mention last week that I mentioned, but I don't have it open for me right now. Um, but uh, I think that's a, a great way to, to move into... Uh, from DIY tech into to, to our guest tonight. Exactly. Uh, we have Skull Kianis with us, and he's from House for Hack. Oh. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> Very well, and you? Good, good. We're going to draw you out of your quiet corner. Yeah, there. Do, do <laughs> please do. Yeah. <laughs> feel like all. Uh, oh, you are going to jump in at any time, so <laughs> you should just. Okay, yeah, you guys seem to be just onto it, so I'm just uh, um, listening. Yeah, moment, we, so. we, we've used to each other by now. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to tell us about what House for Hack is? Yes, it, um, um, House for Hack basically started, um, we went to the Joburg Startup Weekend, mm -hmm. um, that was in August, and it's basically like this innovation incubation a weekend that they have, it's an in, in, actually an international event, and uh, the whole idea is in this weekend you're supposed to start a new business, um, cool. but we never got to that, we actually... Uh, so when you say we, is this the House for Hack? Uh, yeah, so basically what happened is, is a group of us went... Um, and uh, actually met some really interesting folks at the uh, weekend cool. itself. And um, the people that we actually met there became what we call the Jedi Council of the House for Hack. Okay. So <laughs> and um, at the, so, so that's basically where it started. Um, then ab about a week later, we said, well, what we really need is to start pulling people into the House for Hack. So House for Hack is really a hacker space. Uh, maybe I can just take you guys Please through what, what, hacker what, what Hackerspace is all about. So there's been internationally this move towards things like open hardware mm. and very similar to open software where you've got uh, source control and so on. Uh, the guys are also producing open hardware. Um, you get amazing things, like you even get like an open EEG machine. So instead of having to go to the doctor, you can now get your EEG taken you know, by this little gadget you can build yourself. And all the plans, all the circuitry and whatever is available for that. Um, but one of the things about hardware, it obviously costs money, and it of, often takes up space. 
Okay. So if people want to obviously now work and collaborate, they need a physical space where they need to get together. And that's the really where the idea of a hacker space then comes to its own. So it's a group of people that can buy various pieces of hardware. Those could be like CNC machines. Um, Sorry, what's a CNC machine? Okay, CNC machine is a computer numerically controlled uh, device that can cut out, for instance, it can route various patterns. So you give it basically a, a little program, and based on the program, it would cut out pieces or a, a machine for you. Or like a 3D printer. Um, yesterday, I went to Afrimold, uh, this exhibition at the Sandin Convention Center. I could really encourage people to go there. Um, they've got these 3D printers, various makes and so on. Uh, but one of them is actually based on open hardware. Um, and again, you give it like a 3D model and it can print something. Is that the MakerBot? Yeah, so, so essentially what it started with is a thing called RepRap. Okay, so it's a replicate, rapid replicating machine. And the whole dream of RepRap is it's a machine that can replicate itself. Okay. So watch out Skynet and, and all of these, <laughs> <laughs> all of these. And things. the replicators. <laughs> now we just have to get it down to the nano level. And we're there. Yeah. So you've got the the replicators, um, and then the, the group from uh, NYC Resistor, which is a hackerspace in uh, New York City, they actually started packaging the RepRap into kit form, and they, they call that the MakerBot. Okay. And then there's a group in South Africa, uh, also here in Centurion. Um, so the name I just forget now, but they've also packaged it, uh, roughly the same price. Uh, it's called Rapman. They're at the exhibition, and you can basically buy these parts and build your own uh, printer. Um, so that's something the hacker space would obviously be very interested in. And, and what's quite nice from together we were, when I was chatting to you earlier, it's quite collaborative. So, so as guys getting in, you're buying all the equipment there. So it's not you, you personally having to buy all the equipment um, by joining the hacker space. You get access to all this. I know you guys are still working out the exact models and all the rest of joining. Yes. Um, do you have any rough ideas about that? Yeah, so, I mean, one of the things we very early on realized um, is that what we needed to do is we needed to, to split the house uh, from the projects. Okay. So, essentially, the house is a nonprofit organization, and its sole purpose is to promote innovation and incubation of ideas. Is it a real house? It's a real house. It's number four, Burger Avenue, Littleton Manor. So you can go there. <laughs> on, the site, on the site, there's some plans. You can see what the house layout looks like. Um, so is, okay, so this is a real house that everybody packs into and then starts that's building it. stuff. Yeah, so we've got uh, a garage. So the garage has currently been pre-allocated for the CNC machine. So we've got a guy called Marcus. Marcus is busy building a CNC machine sort okay. of from parts. Um, We've got a kitchen, so guys who want to play maybe with coffee, diff coffee and so <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. And we've also got um, a shared space that we use for training. So about every Saturday, we've got some form of training in open hardware. Um, just watch the website. Uh, we've got uh, October is mostly dedicated to the Arduino, and I'll talk about that now. Cool. Um, lots of courses on there. Okay, so like I said, we basically wanted to split the house from the uh, projects. Mm -hmm. So the house provides the infrastructure. So the house, the physical yeah. building, the space to do training in, the place to plug in your MakerBot, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Uh, it also, what we've been get, getting is some offers from professionals that say they want to come and teach us how to write a patent, how to go to market with an idea. So if, you, if your project, and then I'm getting into the project side of things. So, so the whole idea of a project is then it's, it's three or more people that have a common goal that, that uh, want to either do this collaboratively as a, just a group, so there's a little project. If you've got three or pe more people, then you've got access to the house. Okay? So if you're less than three people, you can sit in the corner, then you can work, it's fine, but to get access to the, to the goodies of the house. We, we, so the whole idea is to get this collaboration, okay. interactiveness going, um, I think the human potential, just getting that out. And it often comes out of when you're working in groups as mm, opposed mm. to just individuals. Um, so the projects within, um, yeah, so we've got a number of projects on the go. I don't know, we can maybe get into that, yeah, what, sure. what is currently Do you on. Want to, um, just mention three or four of them quickly. Okay, so the, the first one that we had to do was the access control. So instead of having to buy a whole bunch of remotes, I mean, typically scout hopping remotes is about 400 bucks a remote. Um, we end up, uh, a guy called Philip is one of our, our founders. He he basically ended up writing some uh, code on an Android, uh, sorry, not an Android, web, a web client. Mm -hmm. And with a smartphone, you could connect to the web client. 
and um, you can then open the gate or, or close the, or open the front door. And obviously, there's a whole bunch of security. They've got rolling codes and all sorts of. He's actually a security expert, Philip. Um, and so now we don't have to get remotes for people. So that was the first project. <laughs> so the, so that, cool. the, the, that was very cool. Um, the the next project um, that we're also looking in very seriously is like an energy logger. I think a lot of people are interested in that. We're actually giving some training on that. So the so the project is actually in a stage where most of the development work is complete. Mm -hmm. What we want to do now is get people to build their own energy loggers. Um, you can install this energy logger. Uh, it's got like a, a clamp on a sensor, so it goes around the wire. You don't have to cut your wire to just measure how much electricity you're using. And I think a lot of people would be really interesting to see is if it, when the council sends you a bill or Eskim sends you a bill, um, you know, does it tie up with what you are seeing around your house? Mm. Well, I mean, traditionally those clamps have been big. Um, yes. You can't get them around the damn wires. Yeah. So is this now a better way of doing it? The, cl the clamp is, um, I would say, about four centimeters by four centimeters. It's yeah, got it's a lot better, yeah. Yeah, it fits inside. Well, I fitted one inside my DB. Um, so I opened the distribution box, unscrewed it. Just don't touch some of the stuff. You'll probably no, die. Please, please, yeah. Listen, I don't open the <laughs> DB if you actually don't know what you're doing. Please yeah. just phone somebody to come and yeah. fit it for you. Yeah, I'm an electrical engineer, so, well, whatever. You should be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I know what not to touch. <laughs> okay, yeah, so you have a higher probability <laughs> of not doing something wrong. Yeah, so it basically clamps on so people can then see it. But you can also put it, uh, if you've got, let's say, a tenant... That are subletting, so you can see what the tenant is really doing, uh, or maybe a room, like a, a roommate. You want to see, you know, what is this guy getting up to? His PC is on all the time. How much electricity is he actually draining away? Uh, and so we're doing on the 15th. We're doing some training, actually. So you'll basically walk away with a working energy logger, and uh, so that's another project that we're doing. I think the 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 next one that I want to mention is, is something that's been com coming for a while. It's a uh, it's called Droid Orp. Okay, mm. and it, the idea actually started with a lot of the Android phones um, don't have a notify little uh, LED on it, so you can't see whether you've missed a call, you can't see whether there's email waiting for you, and so on. So the whole idea is, is if you connect this onto, so this, basically this is a little charging device, you connect it to your uh, Android phone, and then uh, if you walk away, there's a little, a little flashing uh, orb. So you can see different colors for different things. Oh, Maybe there's a, cool. a Gmail message waiting for you, or some Twitter things you've missed, or uh, whatever. Or so you guys been doing a rat trap? Uh, the rat trap, it was more like a joke. It started okay. as a joke, but it uh, is very successful. Um, is this because you had some rats at the house? Well, <laughs> <laughs> this is normally where it starts. Yeah, it's normally, so you guys were having coffee <laughs> and noticed some rats running around. Okay, so, so we've got the, the rat trap. And you can see I called it the Rat Trap 2000. So it's a really over-the-top uh, rat catching device. It's very humane. So it uh, has an infrared sensor. Infrared sensor detects whether there's a rat or rodent chowing away on the food. And it actuates a little servo, and the servo just closes the hatch. And inside is the rat. And um, yeah, it's, it's a very, very, ex very expensive yeah. uh, form. Yeah, it's a Okay. There were three projects. Yeah, so... Projects. Is it four? Well, with a rat trap, okay. Yeah, yeah so there's, there's a number of other projects. Um, what we recently decided is every time we meet, because we're meeting every Tuesday and every Saturday, and every time we meet, someone comes with a new, like, awesome idea. Mm -hmm. Now, this is as the tendency for people now to want to follow these ideas, and we never actually get to do some of them. So what we've decided now is we want to limit the number of projects and actually start like finishing some of them. So the first one was to get the house access control. So the house access control is actually working now. When I mean, the guys go there on Saturdays, they can open the gate and open the door and whatever. So that works. Okay. Um, the next one that we're now tackling is the um, Droid Orb. So the Droid Orb started with this idea that you can have your phone and some messaging. But then we quickly realized that there's lots more potential. For instance, you could connect your alarm panel to your phone. So when the alarm goes off, you can immediately see which zone in your house. Mm. So you can put it maybe overlay of the plan of your house. You can see exactly which zone triggered. Um, and you can do, obviously do this remotely. Okay. You could also uh, maybe look in terms of your energy usage. What energy are you using where, um, et cetera. So the, so the potential, I think, is, is really growing. So we... The other thing we were talking about is home automation. So you can use your phone to, when you leave the house uh, and there's some heaters and things on, you, you, you go into your phone and say, you switch off everything. So all the heaters are off, you know the house is safe. 
Um, and then when you come back on, you can just turn on the heaters and, and you're fine. So th those are some ideas that we've been playing with. Um, so, so every time we meet, the, the, it gets better. Um, but that's the current project. And it's got a whole bunch of modules, so I think it's nice so p different folks can join in and, and work on aspects that they... So, so there's web, and there's um, Android application development, and there's hardware hacking, and so on. And maybe I can get into the Android, yeah, the yes, Arduinos. Bring, and bring in the Arduino. Okay. So the, the, when you look at, if you go into um, Wikipedia and you search for open hardware, there's actually a whole long list of projects that are open hardware, and you'll quickly find that a lot of them under, is underpinned by a little board called, a, called the Arduino. Okay. So I've got it, I just want to see if, if you get that shot. So basically, this is what it looks like. Um, it's an open source board, which basically means there's all the plans and all the circuitry uh, and how to make it and so on and what components are being used is published. Okay, so you know exactly what it is. And there's even some guys uh, locally that have made a art Arduino which with a little art fuck on it. So okay. because it's open source, people can do that and that's, okay. the, that's the whole idea. Um, what you can also do, it, 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 it gets powered with a normal USB B port. Okay, so you don't need an extra external power source or power supply and it gets programmed via the same cable. So what it really means is that once, if you've got this board and you've got one of those USB B cables, you can start hacking. Okay, uh, which is really great. Um, then this board is what they call well, the Arduino is really based on what they call physical computing. So w what is physical computing? It's where you've got uh, your computer infrastructure actually interfacing or interacting with your physical environment. Okay, like the rat trap, which is mm -hmm. a good example. We've got um, the, the rats, which is now in the physical environment, and I can sense them, I can see what they're doing. There's some logic and code around that that happens, and it, it does something physically. So for me, that was really appealing because, I mean, a lot, I spend a lot of time with sort of... Let's pass it along. I want to oh, sure, sure. Thank you. With, with open source software, and with open source software... I um, mean, there's so many things you can do, but you some are limited to like this virtual world, and everything was happening inside this virtual world. But now with the, with the physical hardware, I mean, you can take that same creativity and inspiration that you have in, in open source software, and you can actually just transform it into your physical world. Okay, but just to come back, I mean, so basically what this device is, is it's a way through USB to actually then, because I see there's like, what, uh, 13 digital ports here, yeah. or digital pods yeah. or, or points, and then another five analog. So you can from there then do anything. That's it. So the, the, the six analog pins, you can measure things like temperature. Um, so it's, so it's variable analog pins. Yeah, analog pins, and then the, the digital pins are, you can see some of them you can use to do uh, control motors and so on, and some other ones are just purely one and ones and zeros and so on. Okay. So then, yeah, or, from or there you... Also, you get door-to-door board boards that get slapped onto okay. that. So you can show. expand them and make them. I know there's Wi-Fi things, and uh, you've got a board here that's got 20 million other things now, in there. Okay. Now, me, that did drop out of electronic engineering. Um, <laughs> this this microchip that's on here, is this now a full processor, or is it just a... Yeah. Yeah, so you, you can no, you can program it. So, th so that is a. So this on here, you've got a some sort of a CPU memory and that's it. A processor or yeah. CPU processor, same thing. Yeah. So after you've programmed this device and you can feed it a power from another source, then it can run on its own. Correct. Okay. What kind of microcontroller is that? Uh, it's it's called the Atmega three two eight. It's from Atmel. Okay. And um, all the software that you need to actually program it is available online, so you just download it. Uh, if you're running uh, Linux, then everything sort of just works automatically. If you're running Windows, you have to jump through one or two loops to get the FTDI controller to work, but it, it's, it's most, most of the guy, not that complicated. Yeah. So s some examples of using this little board? Um, I think the ones that I've uh, mentioned so far, some of the ones that I've, I've personally done, is one where my wife has, um, I can give you two nice examples. The one is um, my wife is involved with a, a bird a sanctuary and what happens is she feeds a lot of birds in the garden. So mm -hmm. the cats obviously are naturally attracted because they're quite curious now about what's happening with these birds and why are they there. Um, so what we've actually done is we've hooked up the um, a, a little passive infrared um, sensor yes. so for movement so when the cat walks past this, it actuates the sprinkler system. So the sprinkler system comes on and the cat gets chased away. So that, that's one example. 
So that would be using an analog input port and then one of the digital output ports to just trigger the pre sprinkler system. That's it, yeah. Okay. Um, the That's very cool. Yeah, the, the other example, just getting, Tim, you mentioned the uh, sort of add on boards. So the whole idea is with the layout is it's, uh, I'll, I'll show you now. Just lift it. Yeah. Okay, so it's sort of, they sort of slot together like this. Um, so that's the Arduino on its own. And then you got, th they call these things shields. So the shields essentially have pins that align with the little holes um, on the board itself. And you can build these things on top of each other. For, for example, the one I've got here is adds USB capability to your board. And then you get other ones that add uh, GSM capability. Okay. okay. I think you also get Wi-Fi ones. But you've already got well. USB. Sorry, I've lost you. What do you mean it adds? Uh, okay, so this is the USB, USB host. Output. Oh, yeah. it's a yeah. USB host output. Yes. Oh, that's brilliant. Okay, so what we can do, with, ins for instance, with the USB host is connect it with your Android phone. So now your Android phone um, can actually control the board. The, the, the board. And you can send, get things physically actuated, uh, you know, using your Android phone. And vice versa, you can also send data back into your Android phone. That's it, yeah. So, if, so that's exactly what we, yeah, like for instance, the Droid now, Orb, that would be one of the... You guys actually run a little workshop where guys can come in with this and spend a day and actually walk out with yeah. something that's working. Yeah, so, so on, on, sat on this Saturday, um, we're doing an introduction course. So the introduction course, you basically are getting... You can't move it till Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Because we, we skipped our calendar because this Saturday is, uh, is going to be a wonderful event there at the Dome. Okay. It's called Rage. No, it's called Rage. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we'll I, I saw that, there. but I'll go Friday. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be there Friday as well. <laughs> uh, Let's Talk Network will be there on the Friday as well. Um, if you guys want to come but, up to us But you guys run these things um, cyclically, so there will be another intro again yes. at some point. Yeah, so, so roughly every month we do at least the intro. So what you get with the intro, you, you, uh, you pay 400 bucks for the hardware. Uh, so what you get is get an Arduino, you get a little breadboard, you get the cable that's connected, actually everything you need to complete the course. At the end of course, you wouldn't have built anything, but you would have at least worked through a series of examples that uh, let you measure uh, light, uh, let you measure, um, switch on little LEDs and so on, um, switch on a relay, so that's quite useful for turning on, for instance, the sprinkler system, mm -hmm. um, switch on, you know, and, and so on. So it's, it's really just a... Uh, it's, a, a it's course all the basics. It's yeah. all the basics. Okay. Then what we've got is the next weekend, um, we don't have anything. And then the weekend after that, we've got the uh, energy logger. So really, you'll come there with... With what you got on the first weekend. Yeah. And you, you'll get a, the extra, the, the, the sensor, because you don't, didn't get the sensor previously. So you get the sensor. And I think that would roughly be it. So, um, and then you'll walk away with a working energy logger, for instance. Okay, cool. Um, and it's yeah, you know, it's sort of most of Saturday morning it's spent on this. Um, uh, whereabouts can people find out about the courses and what all the things to do and where to contact you? Okay, yeah. So we've got a little uh, WordPress blog on uh, www.houseforhack.co.za. That's a numeric hack for. Four. Cool. So numeric house, four numeric house four, four hack. If, if you want the link, it will be in the show notes, obviously, and it should be on the screen now. Yeah. I'm assuming from the mixer. <laughs> Give her the hand signals. House for activity. Or if you Google for it, it actually comes up. It's the top link. Yeah, cool. Correct. Um, and my telephone number is up there. If you guys can find me. The um, Google Groups is on there. We normally announce all the things through the Google Groups. Uh, the calendar for what we're planning for October. So uh, October, we've actually re renamed our Dino October. So we look, because we're just doing a lot of our Dino courses on, in October. Uh, but we're also moving into things like stats for hackers. So basic stat knowledge, uh, machine intelligence, statistics, statistics, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah uh, that's machi good. Machine learning type of stuff. So if you've got this device that needs to interact with the real world, the real world is actually quite a complex place. And you need to have some intelligence that can sit behind it. So we're mm. teaching the guys how to do that as well. Yeah, and you can't do machine learning without stats. That's so it. That's yeah. cool. All yeah. right. Yeah. So that's. Cool. But sounds good. Easy. It's like very good. <laughs> um, and that's that's also people wanting to. So the best place if they want to get hold of you and find out information is that website. It and really then is. the Google Groups. Yeah. But cool. No, it sounds like an awesome project. No, we'll definitely join you on Saturday. Uh, uh, yeah. Absolutely. We'll come through. We'll Please actually come. 
We can bring make some cameras ma- along mm. and see if we can uh, if yeah, it's some it's guys it's in action. It's normally lots of fun. Um, I, I just wanted to ask, sorry, one more thing. How robust are these? I mean, but they are no, feeling. They're very, very forgiving. As okay. an example, a very good friend of mine was working with some solder and he managed to put this big blob of solder like right on the middle of the solder board, onto the board. Yeah. And he took, I think, a knife or something and like scraped it off and the thing was still working okay. afterwards. Okay. So that's a... Because that's the one thing <laughs> I remember working into my first practical in, in, in Technicon. <laughs> the bloke and uh, No, no, the, the lecturer turning around and said, okay, you know there's smoke in each of these components. Yes. yes. <laughs> let me see who's the first one who gets it out. <laughs> Cause, cause let me see who's the second <laughs> one who gets it back. <laughs> Because and it needs a, what's it, the magic smoke that makes it work. That's it. That's Once okay. it's out, it stops Thanks. working. No, that's very nice. But no, now you also no. brought some other stuff there. Yeah, so, so w- well, this, is, this was one of the things that we showed at the Software Freedom Day. So once you've got, uh, you know, the two components sort of together, uh, then you can uh, st- really start hacking. So for example, what I did is I took this from a remote control car. Mm-hmm. So this is the controller from the car. I won't uh, switch it on now, but it sort of can fit in there together. And it can connect to your Android. And then what I had at the Software Freedom Days is a car that was controlled using your Android phone. And using the accelerometer of the phone, so if you turn it various ways, the car would follow suit. You, you guys <laughs> haven't <laughs> done anything with the quadrocopters at all. No, we haven't really been getting into that. No, uh, no, I'm just, what, I'm, I'm, I know, no, I know yeah. it's just this personal something at some point, once again, when I have free time, I, I want to start playing with it. So I was just wondering, it would be pretty cool to... to I do know some don't guys that together. hack the software to actually also work on Android. No, you, you can buy really all the parts on. to make your own oh, quadrocopter. Okay. So the idea would be to do something uh, so like not the one from Parrot. No, 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 not the one from Parrot. You can buy the motors and the things. There's uh, Stuart. I must get the link again. Stuart had it. So there's a site in South Africa, and they have all the parts that you need. So you actually build your own, and then imagine you just get once again the controller into an Arduino board, mm. and then into your phone. Now, how the video would work at that point. So, look, it's very pie in the sky, and when I have no, lots of it's, it's 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 like. We were joking about it. I mean, we all got those problems of that project lying in your cupboard. Yes. Yes. Several. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. not one, several. <laughs> yeah, so the, the, the nice thing about uh, like a hacker space is you also get like motivated because there's someone else to remind you. So, you know, if you... How's that thing going? Oh. Yeah, no. so, you know, how's it going? Come and show us. And every week you sort of feel, well, you need to show the next step or the next thing you've done. Um, and what I imagine also is they're working groups of three. So you're going to rock up there. Maybe one week you had a bad week and you couldn't work. And the other guys, yeah. at least they're not going to work. So you feel, it sounds, oh, you feel a bit bad. So the next week you also <laughs> put a bit of work in. So in actual fact, you actually finish the project, which gives you then that sense yes. of yeah. accomplishment at the end of the day. Yeah. It means, okay, well, let's do the next thing. That's so, it. Uh, yeah. no, very cool. No, we really would like to And how's see. the uptake through the smaller, the younger kids, the kids at school and so on? Are you... Are you seeing some interest there? Are, yeah, are not our kids uh, going anywhere? Uh, not on the kids' side. Uh, definitely on the students, varsity guys. Um, they've been starting to nibble. Um, they've got some projects, so and they want to see, so they see, well, hang on. We know we can give them some nice tips, so we can show them some technology that they didn't even know existed. Um, and, and the other thing is we've got the, the technology there, so they can come in and come and play with it at no cost to them. To them. Mm-hmm. and see if that works for their project. So I think the, um, I would actually encourage some of the students to, to come by and to see what is there. And, um. and I know it's, the, it's probably uh, you know, related to you know, what your parents do for a living and stuff, but um, I, I kind of found that, that we do lack this sort of introductory stuff in, on a school level. I mean, that's probably the time when you've got the most free time and the most drive to just do something cool. Um, you know, to, to get school-going kids into but things like Linux, into things like physical computing yeah. um, would be great. Uh, yeah. d- because I think for the most part, they, don't, they think that, at least when I was, when I was growing up, I, w- I was thinking that's something I'll learn at Varsity. Yes. And, which it is. I mean, uh, th- at least there I wasn't let down. Um, and uh, that, that's probably why you'd see a lot more uptake from students is because they had Varsity and all of a sudden they're doing all this cool stuff in the labs. They... You know, unless they were in a technical well, school, if they finally learn about Vera board, yeah. uh, you know, and and uh, prototyping boards and yeah. physical components and stuff. But if you go to a normal, you know, Model C um, academic school in South Africa, you you won't have the first clue about 
you know, how to start assembling a circuit yeah, board. So, so we, we're planning, um, it hasn't been really been finalized, but the ideas have been flying around for December. We want to school kids to come and build your own computer. Um, cool. Specifically, the guys were talking about 10-year-olds building their own computer. So doing, making it simple enough so you, you could really get into the, you know, quite early and, and you know, teach these guys and give them some background and, and a jump start. Huh? When you say your own computer, what do you mean? Like literally put put the, the physical computer together. Oh, okay, all right. Take so board, it's take the, the board. board. Okay, all right, yeah. cool. Yeah. No, I'm thinking like great. component that level building a simple no, no, I'm no, going no, no, no. pre impressive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Um sorry, I'm gonna move us al along sure. a bit then and just uh time all the rest. So we're gonna go through the next couple of topics rather quickly if we can. Nokia N9, you've seen it. Uh, yes. Apparently, it is pretty cool. No apps, but it's cool. Still Nokia. It it did not disappoint, I must say. And I and and you like this phone. I and want this phone. To and work. you have to understand what's interesting about it. And and it is marketing speak. Mm. But I've, you know, having played with the thing, I'm going. This is more than just marketing speak for once. They're talking. You know, um, I I listened to to the head of uh, Nokia Design, and I had a nice interview with him. And he's, you know, talking about this new pattern in smartphones. That's sort of the wording they use. So it does sound a bit Sorry, frilly. Say that again. Pattern or pattern? Pattern. 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 There's lots of patterns. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm asking. But no, that's what pattern. I'm asking. So when, when we talk about pattern, um, we're talking about uh, what we're seeing in Android and, and iPhone or iOS specifically now. You know, with the, the iOS pattern is a, uh, at its basic level, is an app launcher with a single button to go yes. home, right? And then the, the apps themselves tend to have a standard look and feel. So that gives you a pattern for what iOS needs to feel like. Okay. Android has a minimum of three buttons, but the usual Android pattern is four physical buttons on the front face yeah. um, with, a, with widgets, you know, with, with widgetized home screens and an app drawer. Um, and that's, yeah, you know, yeah. that's the basic pattern. Um, and so he was going through the kind of, patterns that we're seeing in Windows 7. And so this is genuinely, genuinely a new pattern. Now, it does kind of beg, borrow, and steal mm. from what's already out but there. But they all should. Yes. But now what's interesting about them is, is that they went from the basic premise of no button. No button on the front face. What do we need to do? And he went through like a couple of iterations of how you get back home, how do you get to apps. Um, and then he said they finally you know, settled on the swipe from any edge. Um, so you swipe from any edge and that takes you back to the home screen. Now what's cool about this is my first question when I held this phone was, okay, cool, on Android, if I want to switch back to a previous app, I push and hold home. Very unintuitive if you think about it. And then I get my most recently used apps and then I can switch. Or some um, Androids and some ROMs have taken to um, having something on the notification bar. So you bring down the notification bar and your most recently used apps on the top there. You know, there's all kinds of variations on how to switch back and forth between tasks. Um, and what they've done is if you swipe home, then there's a dedicated screen called the open apps screen, which is basically a history screen. And your app pops up top left. If you ever need to go back, you swipe to that screen and you, and you tap it. So like everything just flows very naturally from their ba very basic that's design that's design that's premise. I've heard some very good things about it. I've heard the guys who've used it do like it. And it's because it's, Debian based, um, you you can use apt and stuff, so you can install most. You can install properly install SSH, but the problem is it wouldn't work. So you still need the developers and stuff like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, my big concern with this phone is that they seem to. It's going to not be supported. And and in f uh, to to be uh, more than a little harsh at Nokia, they're beating about the bush. So I'm sitting there, I'm going. People are f are fearing that this thing is going to be orphaned, you know. W you know, how, how can you address this? And they just said, no, 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 be assured, it won't be. You know, this is not the last we've seen of this pattern. And I'm going, yes, but what about yeah. Migo? The important thing here is Migo. Now, cute and all that is, is cute. Huh. Uh, you know, it's, it's very neat to, to have this, this, ab this abstraction layer. The new, some of the new Windows phones that I can be running on, on pretty much that, that hardware and that form factor yes. as well. But, but, so but not that see pattern. That's, that's It'll have the Windows 7 oh, but it might pattern. Have the, the pattern for window, in Windows 7. No, but the, then they, they'll be fundamentally changing how the Windows Phone 7 okay, OS I, I um, uh, the GUI works, rather, okay. the user interface. So the, the whole swipe thing you know, does sort of gel nicely with Windows Phone 7, but Windows Phone 7 has a very specific pattern. Home button, back button, 
search mm. button that you can't do what they've done here, okay. which is an all screen right. device. Cool. Um, and so he's like, this is not the last time we've seen this pattern. And I'm like, okay, so what are you gonna do? Are you gonna run this on Windows Phone? I mean, it's a very natural mm. question, and like you've just asked, um, are you going to do it on Symbian? Or are you going to keep using Migo? And then they beat about the bush, and they're like, they don't want to answer the question. And there, there are probably very good business reasons for why they're not answering the question, but it's driving developers away. It's that simple. And, and so an well, article I'm still going to write is the, the head of design asked a very apt question, I thought, and it's like, are apps all that? Are apps that important? Because from the studies, not that many people use apps, and I'm going, Yes, maybe, but there are enough of us using very particular apps. So, um, you know, people might not be using a lot of apps, but they'll, they'll be using five core ones. Well, the thing is, I know that if there are developers there and there's something in the phone that it needs or missing, if there are enough app developers, an app will emerge to take care of that yes. need. And this is Android's saving grace, because if it wasn't for the developers, I mean, the stock stuff that comes on most Android devices is shocking. It's the same with iPhone too. iPhone, I mean, it, uh, people forget when you fire up an iPhone for the first time, there is squat on there, yes. except for like the basic phone functionality. Mm -hmm. um, if you want anything else, you're installing an app. It's, it's an ability to customize it to what your needs are. Yes. Um, so yes, I think modern phones need, need apps. Yes, but his, his argument from that point was, what about the web? So shouldn't we be looking at web standards? And my argument will be, and I don't, I'm giving away my whole column, but my argument there will be that browsers lack functionality that we can provide in rich client software. So very basic things, and I'll, I'll give some examples in my article that I plan to do. But there, there are certain very basic things that browsers simply can't do for you. Let me list one, offline. Yes, storage. Yes. Except I don't know if you've noticed uh, Google Docs and yeah. Google it's Mail. It's getting there. Have it's offline getting there. Make, make no mistake, yeah. and I'm willing to concede that it's getting there, but it's not there yet. Maybe apps will eventually be replaced by the browser. Um, I've got a good example here. Image editing. Sure, but are you going to do that on your smart device? I know you can. You look, think of all those photo apps that were actually big sell points yeah. for the iPhone. And so now, all of a sudden, you need inside your browser the ability to manipulate using multi-touch. If you're on a device like that, I want to be able to rotate like, you know, by, by yes. touching the device and, and using a gesture. Otherwise, it's going to be very clunky and unnatural. Now, um, if you, if you want to need to be able to use browsers in a web page, not in the browser. Now you need to be able to tell the browser, listen, I'm working in an app. I want the app to recognize my mm. gestures, not the browser. Please translate. Now, I suppose you could do that a bit with Canvas, but it's the, the development tools aren't there and it is sluggish. It's not optimized. Yes. So... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a we're getting into the, the nitty moment gritties are here. important. Yeah, and the biggest, probably the biggest thing that came out of this, right, was, and, and, and it's unfortunate, is a very, very basic question came up. What about WhatsApp? There's one app, I think a South African smartphone user, uh, despite my own reservations about it, I'm, I'm more of a kick messenger guy, but nobody uses it. This is the problem. Um, yeah, there's another one as well that iPhone also uses. It seems like, but it's not, WhatsApp is it? Yeah, exactly, and WhatsApp is going to, I'm going to start paying for that. At, uh, by the end of this year, my I must remember to give uh, her to me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, Keep forgetting. So, so, and there's no WhatsApp on the N9. And and when we asked them about it, they they explained. Listen, um, and I, and I told them I I didn't beat them out the bush with these guys. I, I'm like, just pay them, pay them to write WhatsApp for the N9. Uh, seriously, make, make a web-based version, whatever. And they said. They did approach the WhatsApp guys because WhatsApp has been written for Symbian systems. So they're talking, you know, they're singing the praises of Qt and how easy it is to port your, your Qt-based Symbian apps to the N9, yes. to Migo. It's no problem. And, um, and yet here's WhatsApp. It's got a Symbian version. It's not being ported. It's probably not written in Qt either. Um, so uh, that's probably why it's not being mm, ported. Mm. And so because they, they conceded, they said that the guys in WhatsApp just don't have the in-house skills Need it to do a port job like this, and it's not a priority. So yeah, and I can imagine they've got far more development things. Yeah, and so um, I, I did want to mention um, something which has completely slipped my mind now. Anyway, I don't know if you had another question. Yes, we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Um, we have our mixer pulling up interesting pictures up Aye. onto the screen. <laughs> <laughs> this is a the, uh, where was it? Iconi. Icon type uh, distractions. Ah uh, yes, yeah. We, yes. Tim had these. 
I remember what I wanted to say about Migo, and that is this whole story um, about whether it's going to have a future or not, and then beating about the bush. So now uh, another thing he brought up that was interesting, and I've been thinking about turning this into an article, but it's it's proven a little bit difficult and tricky to write an article that people would actually read, mm -hmm. is um, the non-techies would read at least uh, is. They, they brought up that they tried to solve two very basic problems with the N9 to make sure that it was a good phone. And that is swipe. The swipe needed to be always available. It could not be sluggish. And that's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. If at any point you're trying to swipe home and that thing lags, it's over. It's over for that device. The other thing they tried to solve, they said, is something that Android's been doing for yonks and has been doing it with a, a modicum of success, which is um, automatic system resource management. So uh, everybody knows that Apple... The iPhone used to just single task. That's how it solved that problem, right? Um, now, with the N9, they, they s it sounds like they've pretty much done what Android's done, and that's have intelligent system manage system resource management. So if an app, in, you know, whatever, I mean, they weren't specific about how they solved the problem, but, you know, in my head, I'm thinking if an app has not been used for a while and you know that the app is used infrequently, it's a lot of sort of trending and, 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 and mm -hmm. histogramming mm -hmm. and whatever, you go... Um, okay, cool. You can you can purge that app from memory, um, and and uh, so it's following and no Android. process. Yes. So you save on battery. So it's to save on battery is really cool. what this is yeah. about, um, and to be able to have system resources free for people to launch other apps. And so I'm like, okay, so now you've solved that problem on Migo. Now you're going to take this same pattern, which requires that that problem to be solved, and you say you're going to use this pattern. So now you've got to go and solve this problem all over again. On another, because they, on another platform, because the whole time they're saying, you know, let's not talk about the plumbing, because cute is what's important. People need to code to the abstraction layer, right? Um, let, let's, I mean, Migo is really just plumbing, and I'm going, this problem is linked to the plumbing. You've yes. solved it in Migo. Um, you've not, well, to, I don't know, has it been solved in Windows Phone 7? Has it been solved in Symbian? Um, and then they said, if I, and then the, the, the response to this question was, if I answer this question or answering your questions like these will answer your previous question about whether Migo okay. has a future. Do you want this phone? Uh, yes, definitely. Do you want this phone? Yes, but I'm not going to buy it because it I, I, I don't. Yes. <laughs> I wouldn't consider this phone. You can't go anywhere with it. You so can't go let's anywhere. move along. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Well, anyway. we have at least two people who want this phone. So okay, so it's fifty percent exposure. Take like that. But he's not going <coughs> to pay for it. Yes, true, and it's not going to be my primary device to be completely. Hey, honest. I felt like this before I got my Android device, and nobody else had and really. He had Android showed devices. us that you can do more with your Android. I mean, yes, but you, 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 you can do now. with this. You can do with this device. It is a Linux no. system. It's Linux. That's what. That's the, the, the my greatest curiosity. Is um, they even, they the even have Android. Let's see if we can get one and let's really evaluate cool. it because you yes. can play for it for a couple I'll of bring, minutes. I'll bring my N9 go. to House for Hack. Yes, How's there that we go. Sound? That's we awesome. That anyway, <laughs> next thing. Uh, true Uncap Noble Brawl brand from MTN. MTN's Uncap one. Uh, I provise it here. Yes. If you buy the two two year, buy the, if you sign up for a two year contract from now until from beginning of October till til I think end of January. January. Four months you get true uncapped on that. And what that means is that they will not throttle you after you hit, sh hit a threshold. does not mean not shaped. Uh, just to yes. make that clear, they didn't say anything about shaping. Well, of course they're going to shape. How Everybody much about? shapes. Two ninety nine for the basic one, and then you can go up to seven ninety nine. But there's no benefit to the seven ninety nine package until after the four month period expires. Okay. They, they have two, MTN has two uncapped packages which they are converting. On October but they, this 1st. is now the third time they've converted those packages. Uh, well, they've, they've launched changed it, it and no, they've, they've launched it, and, it and then they changed it, and now they've changed it again. Okay. They changed so it earlier this year to drop, drop the price. The price. price. Yeah. Okay, well, good uh, luck. Let's see how they rest respond. Yes. Because now the guys have seriously uh, got to look uh, at this I, I think this is very cool. Um, and I must say, I was speaking this weekend to somebody from MTN and uh, sort of working their customer division, and she was, they were telling me about all the... They're putting a lot of effort to try and up their game and get out there, and they're talking. So it sounds positive. My one complaint with this, I wouldn't go for this because it's for two years, and I don't know what they're going to do after four months. But that's they, a, they sort that's of hinted they're going to... I know that. I, I'm talking... So nothing still beats the ATA. No. Pay as you go, 149, there you go. Yeah, there's no Thank reason to not try ATA. That's yeah. the bottom line. That's the bottom line. Yeah. Um, okay. But well done, MTN. So that's the one thing I just want to say. Well done. Yeah. They're starting to innovate. This is the and first time on in a long time. the other side of the fence... I'm, I hope that the test is a success. I just yes. wanted to add that. And then on the other side of the fence... Another no. rant incoming. 
No, this thing from Altec. Yes, Altec Technology Concepts. We're not going to go <sighs> hook on this. We're just going to quote him, and then we're going to move along. All right, let's do Our it. Our listeners can do, 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 their own. Do, 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 who wants to read this bad boy? Do you want me to read it? Go for <coughs> it. Here we go. All right. Direct this quote. Direct quote from Wayne de Nabrega, CEO of Altec uh, Technology Concepts. Who I will ask. Who, who I've been told is actually quite a nice guy. What is Altec's involvement in our cellular network? Um, cellular nothing. Altec Technology Concepts does have ADSL packages. Okay. And they do, they do capped ADSL, obviously, as this yes. quote will say. All right. So this was my favorite quote from the article that Tech Central did on this. Um, so Not knocking Tech Central's no, 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 absolutely not. Good article. Yeah, good no, article. It's a good article. Yeah. Unless you are downloading illegal content, 10 gigabytes per month is more than enough for most people, he argues. A very small percentage of large-scale users are paying for content via iTunes or similar services. The rest are simply pirates. So if you're using more than 10 gigs a month, um, you're either a not, a, not a most people or you're a, you're a dirty, sticky pirate. Let's go to the example of iTunes. Which and is firstly not available in this country. Let's okay. start there. So but let's move along. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but you can still I mean, buy stuff. No, no, no. Look, you, you hack your way around it, yes. absolutely, and we all have, let's be honest. Mm. Um, but, okay, so let, but let's what say you, you, you buy... I've bought a TV show on there before. What's your usage per month? <laughs> I don't <laughs> want to say. Well, a year or at home? No, no, at home. How's your usage? Come. I think I hit 280 gigs last month. There month. we go. And I just want to drop you? one last, the one thing here. I, it's clear to me that Wayne de is not a gamer, and he does not have a Steam Thank account. Thank you very much. All right, so we have a wild <laughs> player to my right here. Tell us, Johan, how much bandwidth do you burn through a month? Well, if you reinstall it on one machine, that's 13 gig. <laughs> Off you go. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say also, lot, I was lot, not last month, the month well, it was called last month. I t update OS X line, 4 point whatever gigs. I know Celia did that update. I then also got the free Steam um, portal game, which I hope you guys all caught when yes. it was free. That was another 8.7 gigs. I'm just going to I'm, I'm on my notebook right in front of me. Let me check. And these are, I'm not a pirate. These games are Th all then paid I'll, for. I'll also, I'll, okay, then I'm not a typical user. I have 30 gigs local for streaming, to uploading onto the server um, so that I can upload it one meg megabit per second. I finished that last month. So that's 40 gigs before browsing. Or yeah. Techies burn through bandwidth. Thank you. We, we watch YouTube. We download stuff. Live.twitter.tv. There you go. Burn like two gigs a night. Easy. Yeah, yeah. Without blinking an eye. Five Sorry, I, I'm actually quite curious. Um, well, what do you use for your ADSL provider and how much do you use? Well, we've got this thing. Uh, it's called Fishbone. It's yeah, a, Fishbone. Oh. Yeah, so we've got a six ADSL line um, bonding device. Um, Again, the guys that come to the house can use that, download stuff uh, as part of the our sponsorship that we got. Nice. Did That's Vox nice. sponsor that, or no? We've got it, a we've got a company called Anyweb that has sponsored uh, like uh, the house space, uh, some gadgets they buy. We've got about ten k gadgets we can buy every month. Nice. Um, and the bandwidth. There's yes. some more incentive to get to house for hack. <laughs> <laughs> more bandwidth than you need. I have an idea that might help you guys as well. <laughs> that I've tested. It actually does sort of work, but I'll chat to you afterwards. Okay. Cool bananas. Um, all right. Cool. We need to move it along because yes, we okay. can rant about this guy all day. Going to Microsoft signing with Samsung. Just I, I'm just going to very clear. Just cursorily mention this. Um, there, a, a new story broke earlier today, and I haven't been able to investigate it thoroughly, but it's just worth mentioning. Microsoft signed another Android licensing agreement, this time with Samsung. They've already signed one with HTC. Basically, Android now costs money for these guys to make, probably as much, or to put on their devices, probably as much as Windows Phone 7 already does. So, and Microsoft well, has used this. Microsoft's making more money out of Android than Windows Phone 7. Yeah, and, and Microsoft has actually used this as a stick. Um, you, know, uh, do you know, people say, um, yeah, so, uh, you know, Android is free and open source. And Microsoft goes, no, it does. No, it's not. People pay licensing fees for Android to us. Anyway, it's a, it's well, a very I want to see what happens with uh, all Google's or all, all their new patents and stuff like that. Yeah, and there's some Mark also court, yeah. court cases coming up. Yeah. And they might, Microsoft might actually. We, we'll see. But all these guys have already signed agreements with them now. Just like Novell with Suze. Oh, it's, just a, it's just a mess. Yeah. Anyway. So, yeah. so, so comic book controversy. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and I, I wanted to lead <laughs> into this by saying that we really need an honest-to-goodness comic book geek for this show. <laughs> so the, this is not for sensitive viewers. Uh, and basically, this whole controversy stems out of uh, two recent reboots or alternate universes or whatever they call them in the comic book world. And the one is um, uh, comic book heroes we all know and love, Batman and Catwoman. And they apparently get a very you know, graphic on-panel sex scene. 
Um, I mean, it's not anatomically correct or anything, but it's, um, you know, it's still, uh, you know, an illustrated sex scene uh, in the book. And apparently it's not very tastefully done. Like, I've read, the wa I've read Watchmen, and there's mm -hmm. a sex scene in there as well. Between but with Watchmen is a very dark comic, and it suits it. Yes, but it's also tastefully done, yeah. and, it's, and, it, and it speaks to the story. Um, and th all the arguments around here is that this is just gratuitous. It's to sell. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, m more, you know, further to this point, and probably I think the controversy that, that kicked this all off was Starfire, which is a hero we don't know very well. Now, the picture that's on screen at the moment, for those of you who have the video, I think it's on screen at the moment, um, that is already a no. reboot. Uh, that is already a reboot of Starfire. Um, and um, she started off as sort of a teen hero, much more modest. Mm -hmm. um, and this is sort of the first reboot. And it's still okay. Um, and, and it comes from an article which will be in the show notes. I'm going to paste it into IRC now. Um, that, that's actually from the perspective of a seven-year-old who loves Starfire. And that is well worth reading. I mean, the, the, just reading this article got me thinking, because it's, it's, an, it's a debate as old as time, is what is, what is tasteful art and, and uh, maybe even sensual art or nude art? And what is pornography? And this, I think, has spoken to me on, you know, on those definitions more so than anything I've, any, any philosophical thing I've ever read on the topic, is, uh, is, is when does something just become gratuitous and, and nonsensical? So um, yeah, the, the, the interblags have exploded um, with you know, DC Comics. You also, know. they reboot. What was the thing uh, the mixer was going over? It was, it's you know I expect a reboot with my PC <laughs> yeah. when I when I shut my PC down, bring it back, and I had Windows seven, seven when there. I started. I don't expect Windows ninety eight when I come back. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so but they do this also when they kill Superman. Then he's not dead, but he is dead. And then it's they do this all the thing, and uh, all the studies yeah. show it increases sales for a blip, but actually in the long run doesn't do it. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I know that there are all kinds of alternate universes. You know, you've got the ultimate Spider-Man and amazing Spider-Man. Well, and so you've got all guys, you know, everybody sort of having their own vision of the yeah. way the story should progress. And well, that's The thing cool. where I like that, okay, let's say uh, one of the authors that I really like, uh, I've just gone blank on his name, American Gods, Okay, Neil Gaiman. Oh, yes. Uh, he did Sandman and he did a couple of things. Excellent writer. If you haven't read Sandman, go read it. Um, graphic novel. Um, but he did a remix of the X-Men universe. But basically, the, the, the spin on it was that it was 19, uh, 18, 1642, sorry. And basically, it goes and puts all these people in 1642 with the, the churches and dealing with all I these remember problems. That. It's a, uh, yeah, yeah. And it, it's actually incredibly well done. It's a very new look at this, and all these people working in a different time and, and different requirements that they would have to work under. Um, and being, you know, branded as witches and all the rest of it. And there's a good, good, quite a good, re sort of, you would call it a reboot because it's a different universe. Mm. Um, but it's sort of telling an interesting story. It's, it's yes. adding more to it. Yes. It's not just, well, let's start at the beginning again so we can s make more money by selling book one again. Yes, exactly. Anyway. Yeah. Look, everybody, <sighs> and this is something I heard about uh, Google a while back, is that the, 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 the shareholders always want to see every year 20% increase. And sometimes it's just the wrong thing. Mm. Sometimes it's actually just wrong. So uh, everything is trying reboots. Look at the movies. Uh, Star Trek. Well, Spider-Man. Yep. Spider-Man's getting a reboot. Uh, Batman got a reboot. Uh, I like the reboots for Batman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They were good. There, there so are some that are, but I mean, this uh, Batman was old. Yeah. Old when it got its reboot. I mean, Michael Keaton will always be Batman. But... Um, you know, the, 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 this reboot, it was long way down the line, um, and it was good. So, I think the they're difference in this... They've got to get it wrong, and hopefully the, this they'll This is get like it right. you've got a running TV series, right? And it's been running Doctor Who. Let's take that. Yeah. Now, instead of Doctor Who, they, they continued with the story. So they gave it a reboot, they fixed the current story and made it more modern. But instead of doing that, oh, well, let's throw out everything we've done before. Let's start at the beginning, and let's not not pay attention to, to what happened before. That would be a better example of the reboot. It's not like a video, where, uh, a, a movie where you're doing a new version of it 10 years later and, and people aren't. It's, it's a running story and you're just cutting off the story, going back to the beginning and throwing out everything that happened before. Yeah, um, true, yeah. And Well, let's hope they sort it out because at cool. the end of the day, we grew up with comics. 
And looking at some of these pictures, yeah, there's no way yeah. my son is growing up with Connie. Of course he is. <laughs> is you you just won't know about yeah. it, Johan. Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah let's, anyway, let's move along. Let's get into our kickers. Um, first thing, awesome thing in Tokyo subways, they got lightsabers. <laughs> just run that past me slowly. I love Japan. Basically, uh, the closest we can see, if you look in your buses, you've got the poles that go up. They, yes. where they put the, uh, the, uh, the buttons are to stop. So what they did, and they basically went and put little lightsabers on these poles. So you wrap with a handle and a light. And from what so I get, so you're requesting a stop. You're pushing the button. Not, on the light not quite with this one, but okay. if you if you stand in quite often when it's busy, you stand, you hold onto a pole, and you touch the bottom of the light, the lightsaber goes on. <laughs> oh, I just need the oh, sound effect. This must be so <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. It's cool. Japan. I want it. Oh, <laughs> when's car train getting these? Car train used to get these exactly. Um, and then our last kicker was some Is some poles in. No, they're well, they are, but they're not. They're not at the top. They're not for pedestrians. Not there. So they are. Commuters Sorry. rather. We need to redesign the car train so we can have these. <laughs> okay, I'll give you that much. <laughs> All right. I, I just want to say it looks like this was actually as part of the Blue Blu-ray release for Star Star Wars. Yeah, so it's a, it's a marketing push that they pushed it. Okay, well I done. like the marketing well push. Well I just, done. It's cool. We don't see this in this country. No. And the last one. Um, one geek dad basically to his kids, they're all very into Star Wars, telling his kids how Ewoks are real and they live in a this, this specific park out in America. So, of course, they all go to the park and the kids run around the whole day trying to find the Ewoks and obviously don't find them, but all very disappointed. So, what he does, he goes home and he says, Oh, my poor kids are quiet. I feel a bit bad for lying to them, but I want them to sort of that magic in their live, lives and that belief. So what he has, he takes all, all, all the photos they've taken, he photoshops in the Ewoks. <laughs> oh, brilliant. So he goes, look, oh, look, they great. were there, they were just hiding. And, and yeah, like, if you actually look at the photo, That's if, so it, good, if it's eh? zoomed out, you, can't, you can barely see it. And then you zoom in, and there in the background is this little Ewok looking out, looking over this plant or all the rest of it. So, you know, from the photos, it's like, of course we missed it. They were, like, hiding and they were around, but they're really there. So these kids actually have that magic oh, still brilliant, going on. Eh? That's great. Well That's done. That's way better than Well done. <laughs> That's way better um, than Santa Claus. And like somebody says, oh, shame, the poor dad's lying to his kids. And I'm going, but it's like Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny. Yeah. Kids no, that's enjoy those things. Wait, the Easter Bunny happen. isn't real? <laughs> <laughs> uh, quickly, before we sign off, very, very yes. quickly, just want to mention, myself and Tim had the privilege of uh, spending three days with the IWE conference, last week, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We recorded most of the sessions I, I think, think 16 or 17 I think we missed one or two yeah. please guys go check on our YouTube uh, channel um, all the talks are there some of the ones we want to actually pump is um, let me I uh, had it open and if you give me two seconds well Maggie oh. Fenter was great she was talking about uh, how uh, she's a consultant for Department of Basic Education and trying to get the teachers to a new level of interacting with their children it also is online. to get their uh, IT skills up and get them used to it and what she says is you've got to start at the beginning. So start them with what they have, which is their phones. They don't have PCs at home. Yes. So how are you going to start teaching them PCs? So get them involved with their phones. Teach them Twitter. Teach them Facebook. Get them interacting. You know, when you've got a question, um, tweet it out t to the kids in the class. Because then they've actually got to read on their phone. And they say, when you're sitting passively sitting back like that, it, you, you don't involve all your, your mental skills. So if you've got to read it off and look on the Twitter client and try and follow the stream, is it, you, you get that much more involvement and stuff like that. And at the same time, the teachers are getting more comfortable with how IT works and how computers work. So when they then do get into computer classes, th it's not that novel to them. They have a much better idea how this stuff works. Um, a very, very good talk, and she's very energetic when she talks. Oh, she was. You can see she's passionate about it. She was the one that kept me awake uh, uh, behind the camera. So they'd wanted to do shots where she's running off screen. I do apologize, but geez, she, she kept us busy. awake. Um, they are right. There's, there's quite a couple. Browse through them, uh, please. Our guest from um, last week, Steve Song, he gave a talk about Africa's wireless future, going in quite depth on what the spectrum is. And if, if you're not understanding what the problems are and what the spectrum is and white spaces and all the rest of it, um, his talk clarifies quite well what this is. And he had a very nice presentation that we actually managed to get. Also, it's now on his website. There are links to it from our wiki. So if you, but I would listen to him talk and maybe have the presentation on your computer so you can match the two and see what he's talking about. 
No, but uh, Steve's song's one we had. He did it in that open source presentation. Yes, but um, you can actually download that presentation oh, and watch brilliant. it. Oh, that's Okay. Because, um, yeah, we mixed that presentation as part of the talk. So yes. you're not missing what he was showing in the, uh, to the delegates. You're oh, actually cool, seeing cool. Yeah. It. And it's definitely so a good way to quickly, I mean, in, in one keynote, educate yourself on probably one of the biggest IT problems we face in this country. Yes. And a lot of places in the world. Yes. Um, then also the other, the last one is Mike Stopford uh, and Richard Mulholland. Now Mike Stopford I know does the 27 dinner. Uh, very cool. If you haven't been to one, go. The was one. There was one yesterday, and the 27th. Yeah, no, I had no time. Yeah, uh, but it was very cool. And they did a talk on so what next? The evolution of the social web. And it's just an interesting talk. It's fun one to watch. And, and they very. Unfortunately, we didn't have the. We just got to warn. There is some swearing. So yes, uh, so a little bit, little bit, and it's contextual. So. It's not like he's just um, pulling a, what's that chef? Um, <laughs> that chef's awesome. Uh, get Gordon Ramsay. He's not a pulling a Gordon Ramsay, but there is a little bit of swearing. Um, I'm oh. just going to go some of the other talks there. It was also Mexico guys spoke. Uh, there was a payment going global. Challenge of scanning Sean Riley. I can't remember what the name of the company was, but they, a South African company that's gone global and what problems they had and how they've scaled and all the things mm. have gone to. Something that would be really cool is if you could list these on a wiki page. It I is. have. Okay, cool. That's so where he's reading from. Uh, all right. If you go <laughs> to uh, wiki.letstalknetwork.tv, go into events, icon, there's a full list. If cool. you click on that, if they are, are, are had access or links to their, uh, I want to say show notes, to the presentations, presentations, they're there. It's basically who they are. It's all there. So cool. you can get to all of that from that. Uh, there was a uh, yesterday, t today, and tomorrow. Which, um, but there's lots. There's early days of South African internet. There's, there's lots of topics there. Go check them out. All right. Cool bananas. All right. Say goodbye. Uh, with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we've run, we've run in a our little show bit of time. Yet. We had Anybody wants to donate this air con. <laughs> <laughs> we had uh, Johan Els with us. You Thank you very much. Find him it was fun again. Uh, Johan uh, underscore Els on Twitter. Jan VZA. Or That's right. Jan from Yellen. The uh, staff writer. Skulk. <laughs> uh, where can they find you? Uh, at at uh, www. houseforhack.co.za with a four. Twitter, just in case somebody wants Twitter, to. Twitter, same you. thing, at houseforhack. Cool. Uh, myself, uh, at Tim underscore Hawk. Hey, and well done. I've and our mixer will stay anonymous. And listen to LTO for Cons tomorrow night. Yes, we'll be here. We'll be here. Thank you and very much. And watch uh, Let's Look Sport from last night. Cool. Cheers. Night. Cheers. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> well done. Do you know what the mixer looks like? <laughs> Look there. <laughs> well done. You were setting it up the whole show. <laughs> <laughs>